When we talk about cases that involve parents hurting their own children, it's always so devastating. But in today's case, we have a situation where a mother sat by and watched as her daughter was hurt by this strange man that she allowed into the safety of her home. She knew it was happening and not only allowed it to continue, but stood right by his side as it happened. It's incomprehensible what this mother allowed her daughter to go through, and once you hear the details of this case, you will understand exactly what I mean. But before we get into the case, if you wear glasses, you are going to want to hear from today's sponsor, GlassesUSA.com. If you haven't already heard, GlassesUSA.com is one of the biggest and best eyewear retailers in the U.S., offering thousands of eyeglasses and sunglasses brands such as Ray-Ban, Gucci, Oakley, and so many more. They also offer contact lenses. The best part of GlassesUSA.com is the price point. Glasses start at just $39, which is up to 70% off of retail prices. They offer some of my favorite brands such as Amelia E, which are the super cute pair that I'm wearing right now. These have been my favorite go-to pair for when I'm on my computer all day. These have blue light blocking coating, which helps to protect your eyes while looking at screens. Using blue light blocking glasses helps to reduce eye strain, decrease headaches, and improve my productivity. I also have a pair of Amelia E sunglasses, which again are my new go-tos. Then I also have this super cool pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses. I love how reflective they are and the colors are really unique. But if you're like me and you normally wear contacts throughout the day and your glasses at night, don't worry, they've got you covered. GlassesUSA.com is also the perfect place to stock up and save on your contact lenses. You can get 25% off all contact lens brands, including Vista, AccuView, Dailies, BioInfinity, which is what I wear, and so many more. They are available with any prescription and for all uses. Now, when it comes to online shopping, the endless choices can feel overwhelming, but GlassesUSA.com also offers a virtual try-on tool, which makes it so much easier to figure out what style of glasses you like and what looks best on you. So give GlassesUSA.com a tryout for yourself. They are offering a crazy discount on top of any coupon code they are currently offering on their website just for you guys. It's only available for 24 hours, so just click the links at the top of the description box below to get all of the details. Thank you again so much to GlassesUSA.com for partnering with me on today's video. With that being said, I am going to be removing my glasses for the remainder of the video as I know the glare can be bothersome for some people. With all of that being said, let's get into the case. Today, we're going to be discussing the devastating case of Maya Chapel. Maya Chapel was born in March of 2020 to parents Donna Carr and James Chapel in Newcastle, England. Donna and James had dated long-term before having their daughter. They met when they were only 17 years old and were 21 by the time they had their daughter. James was described as a loving, caring father, but overall, the relationship between him and Donna was described as unhappy and at times toxic. So, shortly after Maya's birth, the pair split up. For the following two years, it seems that Donna had primary custody of Maya, though James was still very much involved in her life and wanted to help raise her. They both loved Maya, who is described as sweet, brave, and so happy. By July of 2022, then 23-year-old Donna met 27-year-old Michael Damon. Shortly after meeting, the two started the beginning of their short but very intense relationship. According to later accounts, once the two started seeing each other, it was like Michael came over one day and just never left. He didn't live there at first, but the two were constantly seeing each other and spending time together. At first, Donna said that this was a fairy tale relationship. Michael was a loving, caring man who treated both Donna and two-year-old Maya well. According to Donna, Michael treated Maya as if she were his own daughter. The two would bake cakes together. He would sit down and watch movies with her. They had good banter between the two of them, despite the fact that Maya was so young. Maya got so attached to Michael that whenever he would leave the home, Maya would ask Donna where he went. Not only did he treat Maya like a little princess, but he treated Donna better than anyone had before. The two got along so well, so naturally. Michael would spend time taking Donna to the local shops, going out for sweets, and enjoying every minute he got to spend with her. The two never fought or argued. If there were ever any disagreements, the two spoke to each other with respect, never raising their voices or letting things get out of hand. 
pretty quickly after only a few weeks of dating in late August of 2022, Donna ended up moving to a new home in Milton Crescent. And when she moved, Michael decided to move with her. And from there, the three of them were all living together in that home. After the move, once again, Donna continued to tell everyone that things between her, Michael, and Maya were amazing. It was the best relationship she could have envisioned for herself, and she couldn't be happier. At the time, Donna was working quite a bit, so after moving in together, Michael started staying home during the days to take care of Maya. However, after this arrangement started, Maya's dad, James, said that he started to notice a shift in Maya's behaviors. The once sweet, well-behaved little girl was staying up late and misbehaving. She started to talk back and stopped listening to her father. This sudden change in Maya's behaviors was concerning to James, who felt that her new living arrangements may have something to do with it. Then, by August 26th, Maya went off to stay with James for a few days. During this stay, James and other family members were shocked to find that little Maya had bruising on her cheek, around her jaw, and on the inside of her left ear. This disturbed James, so he asked Donna how she sustained these bruises, and Donna said that she had fallen from the slide at the park right before they dropped her off with him. However, this explanation did not sit right with James. To him, the bruises almost looked like finger marks around her jaw, possibly from someone grabbing her face forcefully. He also didn't think that a simple fall at the park could have caused bruising inside her ear. At this time, James was so concerned about these bruises that he contacted the police to ask them about Michael Damon's background. He saw that Michael didn't have any serious criminal history, nothing involving violence or domestic abuse. But he did find out that Michael was involved in drugs and he had some debts with some really scary people. Turns out, before he moved in with Donna, people kept turning up at his door asking him for money. He wasn't able to pay back his debts, so he would often come home to broken windows. Once there had been paint thrown all around the home, their fuses were stolen from the home, leaving him without electricity. He was dealing with some serious people. When James asked Donna about all of this, she basically told him that Michael was a good person. She assured James that Maya was safe with Michael. But to go even further, Donna actually ended up telling James that she and Michael broke up anyways, so he really had nothing to worry about. Michael wouldn't even be around Maya anymore. But as we would later find out, that was not true. Michael and Donna were still together, and Maya was living with both of them. At that time, nothing was done to look further into these bruises or investigate what really caused them. The authorities weren't called, and neither was CPS. I'm sure James's gut was telling him that something was off, but you never want to think that the mother of your child could possibly hurt your child. I'm sure James remained cautiously hopeful that maybe he was just being overly worried. Again, I'm sure he just wanted to accept this at face value, not wanting to believe that either of them were hurting his daughter. By September 5th, Donna was at work when Michael called her and let her know that he had to grab Maya's face because she had been choking. The following day, there were bruises on her face as well as a cut to her nose and a busted lip. Of course, Donna took Michael's word for it and believed that these injuries were somehow caused by Michael grabbing Maya to stop her from choking. A few days after that, by September 9th, Donna and Michael went to stay with Donna's stepfather, Christopher, for a few days. According to reports, Chris and Donna were very close and he got along well with Michael. Well, when Donna went out and left Maya with Chris, he gave her a bath. That is when Chris noticed that baby Maya had bruising all over her torso, which really concerned him. He took a photo of her and sent it to Donna, saying she's got bruises all over her. He told Donna that she should take Maya to the doctor to get checked out. He said to report the bruises so that she wouldn't be blamed and so that it wouldn't look like she was trying to hide anything. Again, Chris just wanted to give his stepdaughter the benefit of the doubt, not thinking that she could have been the cause of these bruises. But when Donna eventually got around to actually speaking with Chris about the bruises, she assured him that Maya was just a clumsy little girl who had behavioral problems. She often hurt herself. 
Donna said that Maya would often bump into things, so that explains the torso bruises. Then, when Maya would get upset, she could be known to bang her own head against the wall or the radiator in her bedroom. She would pinch herself or even bite herself really hard when she was upset. That was how she was getting all of those bruises. Then, the bruises started to become more and more noticeable to the point that even others outside the family asked Donna about them. And each time someone asked, she had a different story. Maya was falling a lot. She was hurting herself. At one point, she even blamed her own mother or Maya's grandmother for causing those bruises. I also want to note that around this time, as people started noticing the bruising in mid-September, Maya had been attending a daycare close to the home. She had only been going for like a week or two. However, by September 14th, Maya stopped going. Donna told the daycare staff that Maya wasn't feeling well and she'd be back when she was better, but she never returned. It's thought that Donna was worried about staff noticing her bruising and reporting it because at that point, people were noticing the bruising even when she was fully clothed. That following day on September 15th, Maya was supposed to go stay with her father, James, for a few days. However, Donna told James that Maya wasn't feeling well, so she couldn't go stay with him. Despite this, Donna brought Maya over to her stepfather Chris's house to stay with him while she worked. Once again, it's thought that she probably didn't want James to see the bruises and thought that she could trust Chris a little bit more to either ignore the bruises or to just not see them. I don't really know what the logic was here. But either way, while Chris was caring for Maya, he noticed a large, dark, swollen bruise on Maya's pubic region. Beyond this very concerning bruise, Maya was also covered in several other obvious bruises that could have been seen again even if she was wearing clothes. Of course, this deeply concerned Chris, so he took Maya to his sister, a nurse, to examine her. Of course, she too was very concerned about the bruises, especially the one on her pubic area, taking photos of them to document her condition. After examining Maya, Chris called Donna to talk about the bruises, and once again, Donna told him that Maya did them all to herself. When asked about the pubic bruise, she said that Maya did that one to herself too by biting herself. But for anyone who saw that bruise, you could tell that it was not accidental and it was not self-inflicted by a two-year-old. There was no possible way that Maya could have bitten herself there. No way this bruise could have been caused by her walking into a table or falling over. The bruise was so severe that it was obvious that a lot of force had been exerted on that area to cause the bruise. In the background of that call with Donna, Chris could hear Michael in the background saying, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. Obviously, up to this point, I'm painting a pretty clear picture that something was happening to two-year-old Maya. People outside of the home were noticing suspicious bruises all over Maya's body. People were growing concerned, but it seemed like no one thought that Donna could have been responsible. No way she was hurting her own child. So, these people were confiding in her, telling her to get those bruises checked out. In my head, they probably thought that Michael was abusing Maya behind her back, and maybe Donna just wasn't seeing it. She had blinders on, so she didn't notice the abuse or the bruises, so these people were going to her saying, hey, you need to get these checked out. However, when family members would tell her about the bruises, Donna always had an explanation always had a reason for why those bruises were there. She even pointed the blame on two-year-old Maya herself, saying that she was acting badly and hurting herself. Based on that, it now seems like Donna may have known what was going on or could have been the one causing the bruises to begin with. Despite all of the concerns that were being raised with her and Michael calling Donna and apparently giving her excuses for why Maya was covered in bruises, Donna continued to leave Maya in Michael's care while she went to work. However, everything took a dark, tragic, devastating turn on September 28, 2022, only nine weeks after Donna met Michael. That morning, Donna left for work, leaving Maya alone with Michael, as she typically did. By around 3.35 p.m. that afternoon, Donna got a call from Michael telling her that Maya had collapsed at the home. She was unresponsive, so Donna needed to get home quickly. 
After calling Maya, Michael dialed 999 to report what happened. On that call, he said that Maya was unwell and unresponsive. The dispatcher tried talking him through CPR until help arrived, and it looked like Michael was doing what he could to save little Maya's life. Once first responders arrived, they took over and rushed Maya to the nearest hospital, where doctors and nurses desperately tried to save her. However, before long, hospital staff realized that Maya was not coming back. She was not going to regain consciousness. She was gone. At the hospital, it was clear that Maya had suffered from severe abuse. But the extent of just how badly she had suffered wasn't clear until the full examination was complete. And let me warn you now, the things that Maya went through before her death are absolutely horrific. It is very difficult to hear and it will make you absolutely furious. So if you're sensitive to this kind of information, this is your warning now. Turns out Maya had suffered severe, unsurvivable brain trauma. Multiple experts who looked into Maya's examination determined that this trauma was caused by being violently shaken. They say that the extent that Maya was shaken requires severe and extreme force, so this was not accidental. In addition to this brain injury, Maya also suffered from extensive and severe internal hemorrhaging to her small and large intestines, likely the result of a blow or kick to the stomach. They also found large areas of bruising all over her pubis, which is the lower area in your pelvic region, though it did not appear to be the same bruise that I described earlier. This new bruise was in a slightly different location, and the other bruise had been mostly healed by that point. And like I said, there's no way that these pelvic or pubic bruises could have been accidental. It looked like she was either punched or kicked really hard in the pubic region to sustain those bruises. Along with the severe bruising to her pelvic region, she also had numerous smaller bruises all over her face and body. The examiner determined that these bruises were likely the result of direct slaps or blows. Then, she also had bruising to her chin and jaw, which are consistent with being grabbed really aggressively on your face, basically. It was determined that one of the bruises, the one on Maya's cheek, was sustained a day or so prior to her death. However, all of the other bruises were from that same day, September 28th, just hours before her death. Based on this information, of course, it's clear that Maya was being severely physically abused for weeks before she was ultimately murdered from being violently shaken. At the time of her death, Michael was the only one home. Again, Donna was at work. However, at this point, police still weren't sure exactly who played what part in the abuse of two-year-old Maya. Was Donna aware? Was she encouraging it? Was she participating in it? Or was it all Michael? After Maya's tragic and devastating death, both Donna and Michael were taken into custody to be interrogated. In Donna's interview, she basically denied knowing anything about Michael abusing Maya. She said that if she knew Michael was hurting her daughter, she never would have allowed him to be alone with her. In Michael's interview, he also denied ever abusing Maya. He told police that just before Maya's death, he was sitting in the other room playing a computer game when he heard a loud bang coming from Maya's bedroom. He ran into her room to check on her and found her lying unresponsive on the floor. He said that he figured she must have fallen out of the bed and hurt herself. He maintained that he would never and could never hurt little Maya. But of course, as we heard from earlier, Maya suffered severe, extensive injuries that were not consistent with the fall. They were consistent with long-term, severe, violent abuse. After these interviews, police started their investigation into what exactly happened to Maya and what led to her death. And what they found was damning for both Donna and Michael. First, they found multiple text messages between Donna and various others, all which proved she knew about her injuries. First, as I stated earlier, James, Maya's father, was very concerned when he found those bruises all over Maya's body and asked Donna about Michael. To this, Donna assured James that Michael was not around any longer. At one point, Donna texted James saying, He isn't here, James, nor do I plan on having him anywhere near me or Maya. 
James replied, she's got bruises all over her. Donna then said, I don't know what to do. She's marking herself Riddick to the point everyone's gonna think it's me. Then, police found messages between Donna and Michael. On one occasion, Michael texted Donna, this will be the last time I'm watching her though. No way anyone blaming me. He then said, sorry, but I'm not having anyone accuse me or you. In another conversation, Michael texted Donna, quote, she has another bruise coming though. Donna replied, WTF. And Michael said, babe, I really hope you don't think I'm doing this to her. And Donna said, I would never think that. These messages prove that Donna did in fact know about the injuries that Maya had suffered. When speaking with Michael, she says that she knows he isn't causing them. But when she's speaking with James, she said that Maya is causing the bruises to herself. She also said that she was nowhere near Michael. There's really no reason to lie about that unless you know that she probably shouldn't be near Michael, but you're still letting her regardless. Once again, this is all proving that she saw the bruises, she was aware of them, and was coming up with excuses for them. Then, in another set of disturbing messages, police saw that after Michael called Donna to inform her of her daughter's death, she texted Michael three times saying, I'm coming, please don't leave me, and are you okay? She asked nothing about Maya. She was only concerned with herself and Michael's relationship. Based on this information, it's clear that Donna only cared about her relationship with Michael. She was loyal to him to a fault, disregarding the fact that he was likely abusing her daughter. She ignored what he was doing because she was so desperate to be loved by Michael. Yet, meanwhile, Michael was nowhere near loyal to Donna. Not only that, but he had a lot going on in his life that Donna knew nothing of. Turns out, Michael had a daughter of his own from a previous relationship that he never told Donna about. That woman actually had the baby in early September while he was dating Donna for those nine weeks. While this woman was having his baby and after he moved in with Donna, he had created a dating profile on Plenty of Fish and was still actively talking to other women. One thing that Donna liked about Michael was how buff and muscular he was, but he didn't get that physique from hard work and dedication alone. He was using steroids and other drugs. If you know anything about steroid use, it's that it can cause extreme mood swings and aggression. That is where the term roid rage comes from. That explains a lot in this situation. And again, as we heard from earlier, Michael was in debt to a lot of people. He owed some dangerous people money and those people were after him. So now going back to the day of Maya's brutal murder. That morning of September 28th, Michael received numerous messages from someone he owed drug money to. It is thought that part of the reason Michael even moved in with Donna was to physically get away from these people he owed money to. But even after moving, these people were getting more and more aggressive, demanding payment. That morning, he told this person that he would pay him soon after he got his next paycheck. By 10.30 a.m. that morning, Michael's stepfather, Carl, visited the home. According to Carl, he didn't notice any bruises or anything on Maya, but he did notice that Maya was acting odd. She appeared to be very meek, almost like she was afraid of Michael. He even asked Michael to take her with him when he left, which Michael declined. Carl was at the home for about 45 minutes before leaving at 11.15 a.m. By 11.40, there's a video found on Michael's phone which shows Maya, who is clearly upset, trying to back away from Michael and attempting to hide in a cabinet in the living room. She was very clearly trying to run away and hide from Michael, who was clearly scaring her in that video. After receiving the messages from the people he owed money to, phone records show that Michael was in contact with his bank, who told him that his credit card had been cut off. This resulted in Michael being on the phone for 16 minutes, ending just before 2 p.m. By 2.16 p.m., he called his mother to let her know that his card had been shut off. After this, he visits the bank website multiple times and attempts to call them multiple more times. By 3.31 p.m., Michael receives yet another call regarding his drug debt. It was only about five minutes later when Michael called Donna to let her know that Maya was unresponsive. Based on all of this information, it's clear that Michael was having a very bad day. 
He was under a lot of stress and a lot was happening around him. Things he had no control over. Things that were making him angry and upset. Given that Maya had multiple bruises from that day, it seems like anytime something was going wrong, Michael would take his anger out on Maya. He probably would hit or kick her anytime he hung up with these stressful calls. It was clear that Maya was actively scared of him that day and was trying to run away from him in that video, which is just freaking heartbreaking. Then, given that Maya died only minutes after this call from the drug debt was made, it seems that after he hung up, he completely lost his temper, worse than he ever had before. So, he grabbed Maya, took his anger out on her, and beat her and shook her to death. Then, he realized that he went too far. He knew he messed up big time. After killing this sweet, innocent two-year-old little girl, he panicked and called Donna before calling 999. He then attempted CPR to bring her back. According to reports, it seems like he actually tried CPR and was actually trying to get her to come back. Not that it makes it any better at all, but I'm mentioning that because in a lot of other cases that we cover, these monsters who kill children will do the worst possible CPR, like on the abdomen on a child, just to try and cover their bruises and make up a story for why they had such bad bruises on their torso. But it seems like Michael was more so in panic mode, trying to get her to come back so he wouldn't be charged with her murder. But none of that actually mattered because little Maya died from her injuries. After these interviews with both Donna and Michael, as well as finding all of that evidence from their electronic devices, Michael was charged with murder as well as with causing cruelty to a child by assault. Meanwhile, Donna was charged with causing cruelty to a child via neglect and allowing the death of her child. The trial for both of them took place in November of 2023, just over a year after Maya's tragic, violent death. Of course, the prosecution was arguing that Michael had been abusing little Maya for weeks before her death. He was this narcissistic womanizer who moved in with his girlfriend so that he could get away from his own demons in his hometown. So he could get away from the people who were chasing him for his debts, not so that he could live with his girlfriend and her daughter. He also had severe anger problems, throwing temper tantrums, and flying off the handle on a regular basis. This led to Michael taking his anger out on Maya, hitting her and beating her over the course of multiple weeks before he completely lost control and shook her to death. Meanwhile, Donna was allowing for this to happen. She was seeing the bruises herself. Others were seeing the bruises and telling Donna about their concerns, yet she always made excuses, always covered up for what he was doing. Now, Donna's defense talked about how she had a very rough upbringing. Both of her parents were alcoholics. Her father was violent towards her mother. Then, her father was convicted of murder and spent the rest of his time in prison. This led to Donna being emotionally and mentally immature. She was constantly craving validation and love. She would have done anything to keep a man around as long as he was giving her love and attention. The defense said that Donna had no idea that Michael was abusing Maya. She just didn't see it because she was blinded by her love for Michael. However, the prosecution said that yes, Donna may have had a rough childhood. She was emotionally immature. Those things are true, but she was well aware of the abuse and those injuries Maya was receiving. Those texts prove that. The excuses Donna made up prove that. The fact that Donna took Maya out of daycare all proves that she knew about the bruises and was trying to hide them. She wasn't necessarily the one that was causing the bruises, but her emotional immaturity and crave for affection led her to ignoring the abuse. She allowed it to happen because she was so desperate to be in a relationship that the well-being of her daughter came second to her. And because of that, Donna is partially responsible for allowing her daughter to die. At the same time, Michael's defense was still claiming that he wasn't abusive. 
he considered himself an even-tempered man who never lost his temper. He would never and could never hurt that baby. She was just clumsy and misbehaved and liked to hurt herself. At the end of the trial, both sides made their closing arguments and the jury was off for deliberations and none of them were buying these bogus stories that Donna and Michael were trying to sell. So they came back and found Michael Damon guilty of murder and causing cruelty to a child via assault. Meanwhile, Donna was convicted of causing cruelty to a child via neglect and for allowing the death of a child. At the sentencing hearing, the judge acknowledged that Donna was not the one who hurt her child. If Michael never entered her life, Maya would likely still be here. But nonetheless, she allowed this to happen. She could have broken up with Michael. She could have reported it. She could have allowed family to report it. She could have allowed James to have custody of Maya. There were so many things that she could have done, but she did none of those things. And because of her inaction and the actions she took to cover it up, her daughter is dead. They also talked about how Michael didn't plan this murder, but it was because he lost his temper. He took advantage of a helpless, innocent, defenseless little child over the course of multiple weeks, all because he couldn't control his emotions. For the murder conviction, Michael was handed a life sentence with the possibility of parole after 20 years with a concurrent sentence of six years for the charges of abuse. Meanwhile, Donna was sentenced to nine years for allowing the death of a child and six years for neglect, both to be run concurrently. In my opinion, neither sentence is near long enough, but after covering so many cases from the United Kingdom, their short sentences do not surprise me anymore. All I can hope is that both of them suffer every second that they spend behind bars and that every single inmate in those prisons know what both of them did. Of course, family members are all devastated by the loss of their little angel. So many people tried to intervene and do what they could to help, but Donna wouldn't allow it. She just allowed the abuse to continue until it got so out of hand that little Maya lost her life. I can't imagine how devastated each and every family member must have been, especially James, who lost his daughter after trying so hard to make his concerns known. It's devastating. It's tragic and it never should have happened. But that is all of the information I have on today's case. Now I wanna know what you all think. What do you think of Donna's involvement? Do you think she took part in the abuse or just let it happen? Or do you think she was in denial and truly didn't think that Michael was abusing her? Do you think this was a planned murder or did Michael do it because he lost his temper? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts you have in the comments below. If you like this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn those notification bells to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure to follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Spotify, and Apple podcasts. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.